This is God's Word for Sunday, November 21, 2021. Today's sermon is the 187 episodes of the fourth chronological Bible exposition. The text of the Bible is the book of Revelation, chapter 14. The title is, The Day of Judgment Will Surely Come. When we look at the storyline of the book of Revelation now, Chapters 12, 13, and 14 shows the entire history of mankind in a compact way. If we have eyes to see the cause, process, and result of the history, it also helps us understand our life, and also be helpful in understanding the flow of the contents of Revelation. So through chapter 12, we have looked where, how, and why these tremendous tragedies in human history began, and an overview of the future direction where it will flow to. In chapter 13, the forces of this world that Satan uses in spiritual warfare against those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. Puppets. We looked at two beasts. So, we looked at the reasons why our history is gradually falling down the path of judgment without being able to escape from the greed because of these beast forces. And last week, I covered up to the beginning of chapter 14. Chapter 14 is about the time of the last judgment. So, it shows the result of human beings living in this way. So chapter 14 is the end of the great tribulation, the final situations that occur when the seven trumpets are blown. So, the saints who were gathered as grain from verses 1 to 5, until the very end, without defiling themselves with the culture of this world, lived by faith according to the word. 144,000 men sing a new song before the throne and the four living creatures and their elders, chapter 14 verse 3. No matter what circumstances comes, they believed that Jesus was the only Christ and Savior and lived a life of obedience to the word of God, not making excuses. They were not Jewish nor just people who attended church. They said that because they believed in Jesus and became God's people of the new covenant, They live to the end by faith, just like the people of God's kingdom, according to God's laws, ordinances, commands, and commandments. So the 144,000 in Revelation is not talking about certain number, it is referring to all those of faith who lived up according to God's word till the end. It's not just about knowing the word of God and believing it with words. Because they believe in Jesus Christ. Wherever the Lamb leads. They obeyed and acted according to the word of God, they were called the 144,000. Continuing from verse 6, the message of judgment and the harvest of wheat and tears are shown. So another scene begins. Revelation chapter 14 verse 6 to 7. Then I saw another angel flying in midair, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. Based on the time of judgment. Chapter 14 shows the historical point of view. It can be seen that it refers to the time of the great tribulation and the second coming. For those who were trembling in fear due to the persecution of Emperor Domitian at the time of John, It may have been a desperate wish for the end of the world to come soon. This gospel doesn't end like that. It shows the fact that it must be passed down to all nations, tribes, tongues, and peoples. This is what Jesus already said. Matthew 24 verse 11 to 14 And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. So, the saints are not saying, Jesus, come today, just because they are living a difficult life. Until the day when this gospel is preached to all the earth, we need an attitude to be willing to live as a part of God's work. From our point of view, the church and the saints seem to be losing and collapsing, but the revelation says the end is victory. So, you shouldn't think that everything has to end because you are having a hard time. There is a mission given to us in one church. 
the result of obedience to this mission given by God. We will not see it in our day, but we will see it when the eternal kingdom comes. Until then, our job is to trust in God and fear God. In the life we've been given, it is to live as a witness of the gospel by following his words. So our faith is to trust in God, not the result of visible progress. Deacon Stephen of the early church summarized the gospel so well and preached it, but he was stoned to death. Jesus walked through the agony of Golgotha and was nailed on the cross. All the apostles of Jesus, including the apostle Paul, died in various ways. It looks a failure and the end. But that death never ended as a death. Until now. It is becoming the way, truth, and life that lead many souls to the Lord over two thousand years. Anyone living in this age are treated by achievements when they are in charge of something. But we are called for God's work in the eternal kingdom of God not the achievements you see with your own eyes. A true saint is to live today by faith to be a part of the great work of him. In my age, even though could not gather tens of thousands of saints, nor do great things, if you sow the seeds by obedience every day, every moment, and becoming the true body of the Christ, is the true saint. By trusting in the Lord. By trusting in God who designs and guides the history. Even if no one knows. The life of a believer is to live one step of obedience with faith in spite of the trivial promises of the word. We are not the masters of history. In a moment of long history, but a servant of God's co-worker in fulfilling God's vast work. Even the saints at that time looked forward to the Lord to come soon and the world to end because of that fear. When God showed the Apostle John the day of the last judgment, by an angel. The time of judgment is the time when this gospel is preached to all nations, tribes, tongues, and peoples of this world. In the fear and trust of God. No matter what environment and situation each of us is in today. Let's not forget that, we are told to live a life of faith, and a witness. Revelation chapter 14 verse 8. A second angel followed and said, Fallen. Fallen is Babylon the great, a which made all the nations drink the maddening wine of her adulteries. What is Babylon the great here? At the time and the method of symbolic expression, you will know that Babylon refers to Roman Empire here. However, he said that the name Babylon did not simply mean the Roman Empire. It has symbolic meaning. Long before Babylon, which destroyed Judah, South Israel, ancient Babylon which built the Tower of Babel and created all kinds of false religions and idols. He is referring to the ancient Babylon who shared Satan's greed. From the beginning of a new human race after the flood, all mankind, who created a culture that believes in false idols, were deceived by the lies and created numerous myths. Instead of God, a false divine being has been ruling over human life. The Tower of Babel incident caused them to be scattered all over the world. In all the peoples and dialects of the world, you can see that all countries are living a life that is biased towards superstitions and old traditions with idols and shamanism. These customs and traditions. Until we are truly born again in Jesus and armed with the value of the new kingdom of God, it will never disappear. Even though you attend a church, you can't get out of such superstitious customs and shamanistic thoughts. So, Babylon the Great, not only the Roman Empire, but all ages doubting and opposing the will of God, persecuting people of faith, and those people living according to their own desires, and greed like Satan, referring to such a sinful flow. But John heard. Another angel shout Babylon the Great fell. In the end, the church and the saints will surely win. It has fallen, it has fallen. The evil has already been lost. Revelation 14 tells the consequences of a world where we ignore God and live in such idols and superstitions. So, the great city of Babylon, the Roman Empire, and the powers of this world. It's not it's going to fall, it has already fallen down. So, the victory has already been proclaimed. The saints do not know they have already won. The church and the saints who have true faith will surely win. Without certainty and faith of victory, we cannot win today. 
In other words, the reason we keep losing today is because we do not know the victory that has been given to us. So we must know our victory clearly through the letter of Revelation. About the glorious final victory at the end where we will finally achieve. If you don't know for sure through the Bible, you may get lost today. Even though you come to church, if you don't know this end, you may get lost even in the church. You will always be envious of the world. You would be a fool to envy the pigs galore in the pig farm. Pigs eat well and for being a meat. Everyone, don't get drunk of the world, believe that the church and the saints have already been victorious through the cross of Jesus Christ. I want you to live a life like a citizen of heaven. Revelation chapter 14 verse 9 to 11. A third angel followed them and said in a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and its image and receives its mark on their forehead or on their hand, they, too, will drink the wine of God's fury, which has been poured full strength into the cup of his wrath. They will be tormented with burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment will rise forever and ever. There will be no rest day or night for those who worship the beast and its image, or for anyone who receives the mark of its name. Another angel shows the end of a life lived according to greed is the judgment of God's wrath pouring over. He also says, don't get drunk of the world. There is no way to escape the wrath of God if we love the world. Satan deceives, by saying, God must listen to everything that his people want. So, if you listen to the prayers of the saints, there are many deceived prayers. Satan is deceiving the saints, by saying there shouldn't be any difficulties in our lives. However, it is only a deception, a trap of Satan that encourages human greed. Whatever reason, living according to one's own desires, is to worship the beast and idol that Satan controls. So the true saint should live a life of perseverance according to the value of God's word in a world where beasts and idols plausibly seduce. Patience is enduring till the end. You can see people fail to endure little more. Of course, that last hurdle will not be easy to win. But the Bible says that walking on such a path is the way of the saints. The Bible does not say that a golden and splendid tomorrow will unfold in the lives of the saints on this earth. Rather, it accurately states that there will be more and more persecutions and tribulations in the future. Jesus made this clear during his ministry. Matthew 10 verse 22 You will be hated by everyone because of me, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Matthew 24 verse 10 to 12 At that time many will stumble, and will hold each other and hate each other. Many false prophets will arise and deceive many. And because iniquity will increase, the love of many will grow cold. He who endures will be saved. In particular, the words of Matthew 24 are the words that Jesus himself spoke about the, the end times. This world is not getting better and better. The saints will be hated by people all over the world, and it will become increasingly difficult to live according to the word. Temptations and delusions that stimulate greed will come to an end. Therefore, today, in every corner of the life where each of us was sent, it's not about living according to the word, especially in mysterious things, in splendid things. To stimulate one's own greed. Don't be fooled. I pray that you will be patient to the end and move forward as the word leads. Revelation chapter 14 verse 12. This calls for patient endurance on the part of the people of God who keep his commands and remain faithful to Jesus. So, for the Jews, salvation is not guaranteed just by keeping the law well. Also, for Christians, salvation is not guaranteed just because they have faith in Jesus. When you have the right faith in Jesus, the commandment of God, the fruit of faithfully keeping that promise will be revealed. If you know God's word correctly, knowing that Jesus is the Christ and the Son of the living God, he boldly leads a life of witness through faith. If you believe in Jesus and try to live according to God's word, persecution will surely come, or temptation and delusion will come. Just as that reality came to the members of the seven churches at that time. In this era, the field of our lives living in this era called the end time. 
numerous temptations and delusions are already prevailing. Therefore, it is not uncommon for many saints to live according to their own desires, falling under the temptations of Satan. As the end of the world approaches, persecution, temptation, and delusion will increase. In this age, believers hold on to the clear standards of God's laws, ordinances, commands, and commandments. You must live by faith according to the value of the word. So the saint must know clearly through the word about the end of his life, eschatology. Through the book of Revelation, the saints properly study and fully know about the end times. You must be able to discern in detail and accurately the way of life in the world that this world seeks and lives. Only then can our faith not be shaken in today's tribulation and we can overcome each day. Because we clearly know the value of God's people and the will of God to go forward. You will not beg for your life poorly in the world, and you will not be driven by greed and intoxicated with the culture of this world. Revelation chapter 14 verse 13 Then I heard a voice from heaven say, Write this, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. The Holy Spirit said, Yes, they will rest from their toil, according to what they have done. The day of true rest will surely come. In moments of pain, those who do not know this amazing promise are easily compromised. You must believe and know the final victory of this revelation, then, you can endure to the end without receiving the mark of the beast. Receiving the mark of the beast is giving up on life according to God's values. It means that they willingly choose to live according to their own desires. It's not about living by the word, but living according to feelings, emotions, and reality. This doesn't just happen at the end time. We must not forget that these words are also applicable to the saints who are heading towards their own end. So, if a believer does not properly know the word of God, establish his or her thoughts according to the word, and live according to the arranged values. We tend to think as we live. For example, the Bible says that homosexuality is a clear sin. Because we do not set exact standards and set their values according to these words. Even the church does not correct what is wrong so that they can repent and turn back. The culture of homosexuality is accepted as the world does and has even such pastors. Seminary students do not learn the word of God at seminary, but rather create an advocate for homosexuality clubs. It's not about correcting the thoughts that have been stained with the world when they come to seminary. Rather, they utilize the word and creates a false theology. And go to churches as if they are a good pastor. They teach false gospels, pseudo-gospels, and false gospels. In the past, there was still a sense of shame about homosexuality, but it is now a shame to say that homosexuality is not right. We live in a world lost conscience. There will be many false prophets of Satan who will color and deceive our next generation. Don't forget that this is a very serious problem. That is why our churches must first identify the fake teachers who have the idea of such a false prophet. Together, the church and the family should establish the value of God from a young age. Unless our children learn to live only by the values of God's word, they will think that such a worldly life is right. Regarding this kind of world, the Apostle Paul says in Romans. Romans 1 verse 26 to 27. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lusts. Even their women exchanged natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. In the same way the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed shameful acts with other men, and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. Verse 28 to 32. Furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a depraved mind, so that they do what ought not to be done. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant and boastful, they invent ways of doing evil, they disobey their parents. They have no understanding, no fidelity, no love, no mercy. 
Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things but also approve of those who practice them. The Bible clearly says that those who do these things deserve the death penalty. The world is supporting this sin, it is becoming natural to live with sin from an early age. As a result, they are persecuting and fooling those who are wary of such things. So, there is one obvious thing about receiving the mark of the beast 666, which is the object of God's judgment. Refusing to live according to the word of God and willingly and on his own to live according to his feelings, emotions, greed, and thoughts. So the sign of the beast 666 is not only at the final end. Even in this day and age, people live their lives greedily according to their feelings and emotions. Following the culture of this world, enjoying it. People who just live like that. It would be no different than receiving the sign of sin of 666. Even if it's not the final historical end, I think that he will die with the 666 mark on his soul that he already agrees with Satan's will. So such people died and suffered in Hades. When you stand before God after being resurrected for judgment on the last day of the world, they will be thrown into the lake of fire where fire and brimstone burn because of the life, lived according to feelings, emotions, and desires. While living in a world, those who do not live according to their feelings, emotions, or desires, but by the word of God, you will suffer, you will be persecuted, especially in the end, unless you receive the mark of the beast. In other words, if you don't agree with what they're after, cut off from the social structure. Normal relationships with people are difficult, they are bullied, persecuted, attacked. It will eventually lead to death. But even if you try to live according to the word and end up dying like that, it was never meant to be a meaningless death, but for God to give us peace. In order not to suffer any more from the temptations of this land, we must remember that this is a calling. Isaiah 57 verse 1 to 2. The righteous perish, and no one takes it to heart. The devout are taken away, and no one understands that the righteous are taken away to be spared from evil. Those who walk uprightly enter into peace, they find rest as they lie in death. God promises us who live faithfully. Eternal peace and the blessing of resting in peace forever. If we do not know these promises, how can we overcome persecution on this earth and keep our pure souls? So when we read the Bible, including the book of Revelation, don't try to dig up useful information but the heart of God in that word. You must meet the truth. Meet the broken heart of God who loved his people and sent even his son. God created with character and free will, he is not interfering and manipulating, but cheering with tears. Don't forget the promise and walk till the end of the road. You must meet the heart of God waiting for you. To meet God's intention and God's heart like this is to be born again. So when we become a born again people, we will only be able to overcome the tribulation and persecution we face on this earth. The Bible testifies us about our seniors of faith lived such a faithful lives. Despite the harsh persecution in Rome at the time of the Apostle John, Hebrews 11 verse 24 to 30. By faith Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt, because he was looking ahead to his reward. By faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger, he persevered because he saw him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the application of blood, so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land, but when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell, after the army had marched around them for seven days. Everyone, as the ancestors of faith in the Bible show, don't forget that we are to live by faith in the promises of the living God. Because we live by faith. 
we should not live intoxicated with the fun and worldly values of this worldly culture. I always emphasize, those who go to hell are not forced by Satan. No one is forced to hell. They are not being dragged away by force, but are going to hell with a stubborn heart, enjoying pleasures as their own instincts and lusts desire, enjoying the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Remember that you can go to jail unfairly, but no one goes to hell unfairly. Hell is the place of consequences of their own desires. I bless you in the name of the Lord to have the eyes of true faith. I pray that you will no longer live your life worrying about whether to obey the word or not. The only way to overcome greed is to obey the word of God. Continue reading the text. It shows what God does when we believe in the promises of God's word in our lives and fight with patience. Revelation chapter 14 verse 14 to 17. I, and there before me was a white cloud, and on the cloud was one like a son of man be with a crown of gold on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then another angel came out of the temple and called in a loud voice to him who was sitting on the cloud, Take your sickle and reap, because the time to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who was seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. Another angel came out of the temple in heaven, and he too had a sharp sickle. Verse 18 to 20. Still another angel, who had charge of the fire, came from the altar and called in a loud voice to him who had the sharp sickle, Take your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of grapes from the earth's vine, because its grapes are ripe. The angel swung his sickle on the earth, gathered its grapes and threw them into the great winepress of God's wrath. They were trampled in the winepress outside the city, and blood flowed out of the press, rising as high as the horse's bridles for a distance of 1,600 stadia. John sees another scene, he saw our Lord preparing for the last harvesting. In the meantime, God allowed the wheat and the weeds to grow together in the church. He plucked the weeds and left them alone, lest he even hurt the wheat. Matthew 3 verse 12, Luke 3 verse 17. That is, the church was not like heaven and was full of strange people. Everyone wore the clothes of religion, but few wore the clothes of faith. Singing hymns, experiencing mystical powers. Even though they've been to church all life, but still do not know the will of God in the word. That is why they do not act according to the word, and look like a fig tree that is lush on the outside, but have no fruit on the inside. There are many people who are good at speaking when they come to church. Some have confidence and love for the gospel, but some people are just good at talking. Their characteristic is that even small obedience is difficult, making full of excuses. But the scary thing is, it is that these tears do not know that they are living their tears life that way. They are mocking and insulting the faithful people, and having lazy compromise. Jesus' command was clear. Leave it. The grain is spoiled. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 to 30. Jesus told them another parable, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat, and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. The harvest time Jesus speaks of in Matthew 13 is the story of Revelation 14. Like a threshing machine that separates wheat from tears. Tribulation and persecution will distinguish real saints from fake saints in the last days. These things Jesus said. Isn't it so clear through this passage of Revelation that what finally comes to pass? How is my life as a saint today? Are we truly living a life like wheat in the eyes of our Lord? 
or always complaining in the church, even giving saints a hard time and making them negative. I hope you can look back carefully. Some people have a negative influence on the other hand, there are people who create an atmosphere that is bright and energetic and wants to do something. I wish you all become good influencer. A truly precious mission that we build the life-bearing life in ourselves. In fact, it may seem difficult because it is not easy and satisfying, but, we gather our strength and focus more on this mission. I pray that we can become one with the precious life that our Lord leads us to seal. The tears harvested here. It is expressed as a bunch of grapes. An angel with a sharp sickle gathered these grapes, tears, and threw them into a large wine press. It is trampled underfoot within the frame, chapter 14 verse 20. So the frame is bleeding. How much blood flowed? 1,600 stadia. So, it was said to have spread about 320 kilometers. John is writing. This is God's judgment, and there will be a terrible judgment in which the bowls of wrath are poured out. It also makes it clear that it is an unforgiving judgment. Since the creation of the world, God has endured human sins. Finally, on the day when God's wrath is poured out, the corpses of those wicked people are like a farmer who squeezes wine from a wine press, they will be judged. It is a symbolic scene. This is the last scene in chapter 14. This scene is the scene of pouring out the seven bowls, that is, the final wrath poured out on the unbelievers and weeds that were divided as the seventh trumpet was sounded in chapter 11. The story will be told in detail in chapter 16. I have explained at chapters 12, 13, and 14 like this. Chapters 12, 13, and 14 tell the cause of why human history has flowed like this. First, it shows you the battle in heaven and what happens on earth as a result. As a result, it shows compressed history of the process, cause, and consequence of the wrath. If you understand the big picture well, the contents of the book of Revelation will become more visible. Well then, I looked all over from chapters 4 to 14 for the third content of the book of Revelation, things to come. In chapter 11, the seventh trumpet sounds. In the end, it is divided into wheat and tears. What is the state of the separated grain saints and the raptured people? What is the state of the people who were left behind in this world without being raptured? We'll continue next week.